welcome to the first in the series for ACCA Financial Management Tricky Topics. My name is Jo Tuffle and I've been teaching on ACCA courses for over 15 years. So the first tricky topic area is the specific cost of capital. This comes from the business finance area of the syllabus. We're going to be looking at why we need to calculate it, when we're going to use it, and then finally how we calculate it. And it's tricky because it uses a complex mathematical formula. Now the why we calculate it is because of investment appraisal. It may require a specific cost of capital. Investment appraisal requires an appropriate discount rate, normally the current cost of capital of the company, the weighted average cost of capital. This is only an appropriate measure, however, for appraising a firm's investment proposals under certain conditions. Three conditions. That financial risk remains the same. That business risk remains the same. So the project has the same risk as the company, i.e. it's in the same business area. And the project is small compared to the company as a whole. So it does not affect it too much. Now, Business risk is specific to a project. So this is the main issue. So when investing in projects with different business risk, a specific cost of capital using the capital asset pricing model should be used. So what is CAPM and what are betas? Well, CAPM calculates the required return on investment based on an assessment of its risk called a beta. The beta is used to measure the level of systematic risk or volatility of an investment returns. Systematic risk as opposed to unsystematic risk is the type of risk that is caused by factors beyond the company's control. This type of risk cannot be diversified away by investing in a portfolio. So examples of systematic risk include natural disasters, political elections, inflation and wars. So these are outside the company's control. So what is an asset beta? Well, an equity beta is both market risk and financial risk. An asset beta measures the market risk of a company without the impact of debt. Remember that systematic risk. Now, the level of debt that a company has can affect its performance, making it more sensitive to changes. So your equity beta is riskier with financial risk. Since companies have different capital structures and the levels of debt, an analyst can then calculate the asset beta to effectively compare them against each other or against the market. This way, only the sensitivity of a firm's assets, i.e. its equity, to the market will be factored in. You're stripping out the financial risk. So what are the four steps to a specific cost of capital? To appraise a project in a new business area. Well, the four steps are, you need to find a proxy equity beta in the new business area. So say you're in the business area of recruitment and now you're going to go into a new business area, which is training. You can't use your company's current equity beta to calculate a specific cost of capital because you're in the area of recruitment. So you need to find a proxy company in the area of training. Once you find that proxy equity beta, you then need to de-gear it, strip out the financial risk. Because remember that equity beta is a combination of the asset beta and financial risk. We just need the asset beta, which represents the market risk of being in the new business area. You then need to re-gear that asset beta using your company's capital structure to get a new equity beta to be able to use in CAPM. And therefore that's the final step. Step four, put the new equity beta into CAPM to get a specific cost of capital in the new business area. This is what we will then use to appraise the project. Now for steps two and three, we are given an asset beta formula on your formula sheet. And what the asset beta formula does it strips out that financial risk from the proxy equity beta. Notice we assume the debt beta is zero. This would have a marginal effect on that asset beta calculation. So in your exam, we assume it's zero. 
we then rearrange this formula to regear it to get back to an equity beta that we can use to calculate a specific cost of capital. I'm going to show you how to do these four steps using an exam example. So the exam standard example I'm going to use is called Zeddy Moore Company and it's from the March-June 2021 sitting. I'll be showing you this on the practice platform. So here I am on the practice platform using this Zeddy Moore Company question to show you how to calculate a specific cost of capital. So the question says, using the capital asset pricing model, calculate Zeddy Moore Company's current cost of equity and a project specific cost of equity suitable for the new venture. And then it says, referring to the calculations, comment briefly on the view of the commercial director. So first of all, let's look at the scenario. So Zeddy Moore is a listed company in the house construction industry. Over the past five years, results have been disappointing. The share price has fallen from 350 to 105 today. So our share price is 105. The deterioration in the performance and the share price has been accompanied by an increase in financial gearing. Oh dear. We have an extract here with the share capital retained earnings. Note that it says 0.50 per share nominal value. That's that par value. It's not one, it's 50 cents. We've got two sets of long-term liabilities, which are long-term debt, irredeemable loan notes and a bank loan. Then it gives us some information about what the loan notes are quoted at. And then we've got some new information. But just before that, just check, it's also got an equity beta of 2.3 for Zeddymore. Then to improve financial performance, the Zeddymore company is considering the construction of commercial properties. So it's moving from office blocks to industrial complexes. This is a new activity, so the risks involved would be different. Hence the reason we're calculating a project specific discount rate. And the financial director wants that, but the commercial debt director does not believe it's necessary. We've got WCP is in construction projects. So that's going to be our proxy company. They've got an equity beta of 1.25. And then they've told us what their current capital structure is. They've got ordinary shares and they've also got loan notes. They don't have a bank loan. And then right at the bottom, both companies pay tax at 20%. The risk fee rate is 4%. And the expected return on the market, that's RM, is 10%. So we have everything we need. This now is important to lay things out. So it's quick and easy for you to do these calculations. So first of all, reread the requirements as using the capital asset pricing model, calculate Zeddy Moore's current cost of equity and a project specific cost of equity suitable for the new venture. OK, so the first requirement is the current cost of equity. So first we've got to find the current. OK, so let's put the information in that we need and then we can have a go. At referencing. So what I've done is a table. I've got Z company stuff and the proxy company stuff, and then I'm going to use those. So Zeddy Moore Company's equity beta is 2.3. You can see that in the scenario just here. Then we've got a proxy company was 1.25. Now we need the market values, okay, to do this specific cost of capital. So these are market values. So when you do them, do it in the cell, all right? Do it in the cell. Do not write out what you're doing because the marker can see, but you do need to do your workings in the cell, okay? Don't just put a figure there because if it's wrong, they can't help. Focus on doing the workings in the cell and then you will be clearly marked if there's any own figure rules, marks to follow through. So. First of all, the current cost of equity I'm going to calculate here. So again, I'm just going to do use CAPM in the cells. So CAPM, we can look at our formula sheet, is RF, the risk-free rate, plus the beta with RM, the market rate, minus the RF. 
do not write that out because they know the formula. So do it all in the cell and therefore it's going to be equals the risk-free rate of 4 plus the beta, pick Z company's beta, times by, open brackets, the 10 minus the 4. So notice I've done my workings, I've clearly labelled it, I've referenced the 2.3 and it's all done in the cell and it's 17.8%. So you can make that, let them know it's a percentage and therefore highlight that you've done the first requirement, which is the current cost of equity. Right, then we've got to calculate a project specific cost of equity. And so there's three steps to this one. There's finding the proxy and you D gear. So you can write this out so it's clear what you're doing. Then you've got to re gear to Z company gearing. And then you've got to use CAPM. But again, I am going to reference all these cells when I do them. So let's work out the market values of their equity and their debt. So Z Company has 40 million nominal value shares in issue, not the number of shares. So we need to take that 40 million nominal value, divide by the par value, and then times by the current share price. Now the current share price is 105. So therefore the market value is 84. The market can see the workings are there. So if I make any slips, they can then understand whether they're going to still give me half a mark or not. All right. But at least I've shown the workings if I have made a slip. The loan notes also need valuing. So we've got 250 million nominal value and they've got a hundred dollar nominal value per loan note. So it's 250 divided by a hundred and now we need the price and they're 65. So 162.5. The loan is not traded. So we just take the nominal value at 20. So the market value of debt needs to be the addition of these two. And therefore that is our market value of debt. Now for the proxy company, we need to go down to the bottom paragraph and it says they have a hundred million nominal value ordinary shares in issue, 260 per $1. So it's going to be a hundred million. Let's just do it properly divided by one times by 260. And the loan notes are 110 nominal value of loan notes in issue quoted at 96 per hundred. So again, it's 110 divided by 100 times by 96. They don't have a loan. So the market value is simply of debt, the loan note value. We're now ready to do the D gear. Now, the key here is to first of all, do the fraction as I call it first, and then times the fraction to get the beta A. So you'll times the fraction by the proxy beta E to get the beta A. What do I mean by the fraction? Well, let's have a look at the formula sheet again. So what I mean by the fraction, remember we cross out the debt portion of the asset beta formula and we're just using the equity portion, shall we say. So it's the value of equity over the value of equity plus the value of debt one minus T. Right, that is the fraction I want. And then I'm gonna times that fraction by the beta E to get the beta A. So before I do the fraction, however, I'm now gonna put the tax in because I don't want to have to put the one minus T into my formula. I want to put it in straight away as what it is. I don't wanna to have to put do one minus T in brackets. So tax is 20% for both. So why not just work out one minus T 
so that you can use it straight away. So 1 minus 20% gives you 0 0.8. So it's going to be the value of x to use in the proxy, don't forget, divided by, open brackets, the value of equity again, plus the value of debt times 1 minus t. The order of operations will work because it will times the 1 minus t first and then add because you put it in the brackets. So the fraction is worth 0.74. We now need to times that fraction by the proxy beta to get the asset beta of 0.943. Now we need to re-gear. So again, we're going to use the fraction again. This time we reverse the fraction. So you put the top on the bottom. So let me call up the formula sheet again. So as I've taught you, you need to put the bottom on the top and the top on the bottom and then spot round the betas. So we now need the equity beta. So it's going to be the equity beta with the value of equity plus the value of debt over the value of equity times by the asset beta. So I'm going to do the fraction now. And remember, I'm using Z companies. So it's going to be open brackets now, value of equity plus the value of debt, including that loan, times by 1 minus t, close brackets, divided by the value of equity again. Now I get the beta e and the beta e is now that fraction times by the beta a and it comes out as 2.5832. Finally I can now use cap m. So now I need a specific cost of equity which I'm going to label so the examiner knows I could actually copy this down and then just change a figure. So copy this down. As you can see, I've now got the same figures as before, but I just need to reference. So I need to change this reference here to be the new equity beta, this one. And that should automatically change it to be what I need. Let's now put it to two decimal paces so it looks better. So the specific cost of equity is 19.5. Therefore, we've done the current cost and the specific cost. And now we just need to finish up by doing part two, which is referring to your calculations above. Comment briefly on the view of the commercial director. Well, let's remind ourselves what the scenario said. It says the financial director has proposed that a project specific discount rate should be used, but the commercial director does not believe this is necessary. OK, well, if we use the current one of 17.8, it's much lower than the new one for the new business area of 19.5. So that's a comment you need to make. So therefore, the new area is riskier than our current offer. And if we were to use our old cost of equity to appraise the new business area, we may overstate the new venture's net present value because we're discounting at a lower rate than we should be. And therefore, incorrect decision making will be made potentially. So those are the comments you need to make. So I've written that out for you because it is two marks. So the new project specific cost of capital is higher, indicating the new venture is riskier and shareholders want higher compensation for the risk. Praising the new venture using the current cost of equity as the commercial director wants, referring to the question would mean an overstatement of MPV and lead to a potential incorrect decision. Notice I've got spelling and grammar mistakes, but they do not matter as normal. So that's the end of part A of that question, Zeddymore Company. Well done for completing this short video on tricky topic, specific cost of capital.